Yes. <laughs> Hello. Excellent work. Thank well you. Yeah. My quick video tour. I saw you. <laughs> um, my name is Carmel, I'm the manager here at Loon Gallery and I just want to welcome you all here and it's fantastic to see such great numbers uh, for the opening of this our autumn exhibition at Loon Gallery asymmetrical warfare. This is an exhibition, as you can see, showcasing the work of an internationally acclaimed Irish artist, Conor Walton, who is here with us today with his family, friends and many supporters, artists, and please give him a warm and long welcome. Asymmetrical Warfare is an exhibition of oil on campus works which masterfully executes still life landscape and portraiture in the European tradition of classical painting. Connor, as you can see, employs an incredible use of visual language that is informed by many years of both academic study of the history of fine art and art theory and through studying the techniques of the old masters while de developing his own artistic practice. Not only is Connor a master of classical composition and convincing realism, he is also a master of language, of the language of signs and symbols, from both the Western canon of painting and from popular culture. He's very much preoccupied with creating complex, socially satirical works where he demonstrates his observations and concerns about contemporary social issues with meticulous execution. He deliberately creates these absolutely amazing statement pieces, and I think very much forcing us, the viewer, to pause and question not only our own truth, meaning and values as individuals, but also as societies. Connor, um, as you may or may not know, has won numerous awards for his work. He has held 15 solo <coughs> exhibitions in Europe and America, and he is featured in museum exhibitions across Ireland, the UK and Europe. And his work, as you can um, imagine, is held in many public and private collections. Um, actually, I know some of you here today own um, some of Connor's work, so welcome. We are thrilled that over the next couple of months, our audience here at Lewin Gallery, which is the Municipal Gallery, not only for Athlone, but County Westmeath 
and indeed the Midland counties, um, that they will get to experience Connor's captivating work. It's a great opportunity for visitors of all ages, disciplines, and indeed nationalities. Athlone is an emerging tourist destination in Ireland's hidden heartlands, and during the summer months, we have a great influx of visitors from all over the world. So this is a fantastic opportunity for them to get more familiar with this acclaimed Irish artist's work. We are very privileged today at Leon Gallery and so excited to have two great art figures with us today. The first, um, Connor, a great artist and academic. The second, our guest speaker today, Robert Falla, who is one of Ireland's best known and most influential contemporary artists and designers. And we are beyond delighted that he took the time to come today and to open this exhibition. And again, I would like you to give him a warm Athlone welcome. <laughs> Robert, as you know, was born in Dublin and he studied at Bolton Street College of Technology and began painting in the late 1960s. His work, as of course we all know, is in all the important collections, and to name a few, the National Gallery of Ireland, the Ulster Museum, the Hugh Lane Gallery, the Crawford, and I could go on and on and on. He chaired the Irish National Congress for 10 years. This was a non-party organisation working for peace in Northern Ireland. He's president of the Ireland Institute, a centre for historical and cultural studies. He served as chair of the Artists' Association of Ireland when it was first founded. And he is a fellow of the World Academy of Art and Science, as well as being a member of Ishbana. Some of his most widely recognised works, as everybody in the country knows, includes the set designs for Riverdance. And for four years ago, there was a wonderful retrospective of his work at the RHA Gallery. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an absolute privilege for me to invite Robert Balla to address you and to formally open Asymmetrical Warfare. I hand you over now to Robert. Thank you. A few weeks ago, I was interviewed by the painter J.D. Vallely as part of the John Hewitt Summer School in Armagh. And I must admit that one of his first questions caught me slightly by surprise. The question he asked was, when was your work first exhibited in public for the very first time? It only took a moment to recall the occasion because for me personally, it represented a truly significant milestone. It was the Irish Exhibition of Living Art in 1967. It took place during the month of September in the College of Art Gallery, uh, which at the time was sited beside Leinster House in Kildare Street, where I had two works chosen for display. This, of course, means that I have been painting and exhibiting for almost 52 years. I think you'll agree that's a long, long time. Some might suggest that enormous perseverance must have been involved to keep going for such a duration. But no, because of the real passion I have for art, the journey has not been an arduous one at all. In fact, that passion drove me as a self-taught artist to slowly strive to develop the skills that I believe are essential for the creation of acceptable pictures. I also took every opportunity, both at home and abroad, to view original work by artists that I felt I could learn from. Sadly, however, in recent decades, in spite of that passion, I have frequently discovered that visits to contemporary galleries have often proved to be fairly dispiriting experiences. Instead of viewing impressive examples of the painter's art, I have often found myself exposed to what I can only describe as something that resembles a student's sociology project or perhaps an uninspiring ga gathering of detritus in, on the gallery floor, or even a flickering video presentation in a dark, claustrophobic chamber. Craftsmanship and skill dominated the history of Western art 
right up until the modernist revolution that started in the last part of the 19th century. Since then, the acquisition and use of manual skills has been downgraded in terms of artistic status, while at the same time, the idea or concept has advanced. This is why, as someone who appreciates a well-made picture, it is such an exceptional pleasure to visit this gallery and view the wonderful paintings by Connor Walton. Ever since he was an art student, Connor has sought ways to enhance his art practice by immersing himself in the techniques uh, used by painters over many centuries. After he left the National College of Art in Dublin in 1993, he pursued an MA in Art History and Theory at the University of Essex, and then studied old master techniques in Florence. All of that hard work and committed commitment has resulted in these exceptionally well-crafted pictures currently on display here in Athlone. However, I am convinced that it would be a big mistake to simply view Connor Walton as an artist with exceptional skills who makes fine pictures. Connor Walton is a person with strong opinions and someone with a lot to say, and he uses his art practice to capture, critique, and present contemporary social issues to the public. Nevertheless, <laughs> even if his pictures obviously refer to contemporary events, he remains determined that they are not reducible to mere propaganda. He wants his work to be not only accessible to a wide audience, but also <coughs> to challenge viewers as to whether their own opinions are being endorsed or mocked. He describes this ambiguity as <coughs> dancing along cultural fault lines. As it happens, I believe that the kind of realist paintings that Connor paints are perfect vehicles for this sort of ambiguity. To illustrate this, I'm going to re relate a short story. In the 1960s, a Latin American painter won a prize in an international competition or exhibition for his picture, which realistically portrayed toiling peasants on a sugar plantation being whipped by a, the landlord, landowner <coughs> riding a majestic black horse. A wealthy collector who expressed an interest in acquiring the picture asked to meet the artist, who eagerly proceeded to explain to the potential purchaser his intention of making a strong social statement with his painting. Yes, yes, responded the collector. That's exactly how those lazy bastards should be treated. <laughs> Connor Walton has established an international career that sees him exhibiting worldwide in Britain, Denmark, Norway, France, and America. Some time ago, while on a trip to London, I wandered into the National Portrait Gallery to view the BP Portrait Award exhibition <coughs> and was pleasantly surprised to see Connor's painting, The New Religion, hanging in a prominent position. However, I was intrigued to see rows of temporary chairs laid out in front of the picture, and as I hung about, observed a group of visitors quickly occupy them. Their accompanying guides then proceeded to talk about the painting. As I listened, I became slightly irritated, in that I felt the guide didn't quite get the gist of the painting. I was tempted to blurt out my own interpretation, but thankfully discretion prevailed and I kept my mouth firmly shut. Tonight, or this evening, however, I have no difficulty in declaring that it is a great privilege for me to formally launch this powerful body of work by an exceptionally talented painter, Connor Walton. very much Robert and I'm sure we'll all agree with his sentiment and his opinion of Connor's work which is exceptional and um, I'm not sure if I'm going to put you on the spot but I would like to invite you to say a few words if you felt comfortable speaking Connor. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, I, I always get caught a little bit off guard at my own exhibitions. I've, I've opened uh, two exhibitions for other artists uh, in, in the last couple of months and uh, obviously prepared a, a, a speech and knew what I wanted to say. 
and of course coming up to my own exhibition, there are so many other things that I have to work about uh, and, and, and organize and plan for that in this situation I always think, damn it, I didn't prepare anything to say. Uh, but really all I have to do is thank you all for coming. Um, uh, thank uh, Carmel uh, and uh, Simon and Emma, the, all the gallery staff for doing such a great job of uh, hanging the show, producing the catalogue, and it's a great space to show in. I'm so thrilled to uh, be able to present my work in such a, a brilliant space. Uh, really delighted to that this has finally come together. Um, uh, Bobby has been a, a great friend. I'm, I'm thrilled that she could open the, the, uh, the exhibition. Uh, back in the, um, the late 80s and early 90s when I was a student, I was looking at his work uh, as um, one of the few artists, particularly the few Irish artists, that really presented uh, both great, you know, work of great technical uh, skill and also thought, you know, the, 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 the level of thought and, and uh, political consciousness and philosophical consciousness that he put into my work. And, and that has been one of uh, my uh, influences. He's certainly been one of, one, one of the great influences on, on me. So I'm, I'm delighted to, uh, you know, to, to, to have him uh, open the show and uh, present me in such a flattering light. Uh, I'm, I'm really honored. Uh, beyond that, uh, I just have to thank you, uh, everyone for coming, friends, family, and new people I've only met. It's just great to see such a great crowd here, and I hope you really enjoy the work. If you have any questions at all uh, about the paintings, uh, talk to me while I'm here. Um, I'll be back in, in Athlone for various uh, outreach uh, uh, programs and Q&A and whatever else, so uh, if, if, you know, please come along to those events and if I can do anything for you while I'm here, if you want a catalogue signed or uh, posters, you know, there are, there are posters, there are five of each, there is steel, very happy to sign a poster, uh, and if you want to buy a picture, that'd be great too. Um, so uh, I hope that covers everything. Thank you so much. Here, here. It's me that should be plugging his work. So, I mean, feel free to come back. And if anybody is actually genuinely interested in purchasing Connor's work and you'd like to see the work in private, please talk to us and we can arrange an appointment and you can come and see the work when the gallery is closed. Okay, I just, if you could bear with me for a few moments, there are just a couple of thank yous that I would like uh, to extend myself. Firstly, I'd like to congratulate Connor um, and to thank him for giving us the opportunity to show his work here at Lewin Gallery. Um, so that definitely needed to be said. We've wanted to show his work for a long time, so we're thrilled that that's finally been realised. Um, also, obviously, thank you so very much to Robert Ballon uh, for giving up his time and joining us here this afternoon in Athlone to open the show. Um, I'd also encourage you to pick up um, the catalogue for Asymmetrical Warfare. Uh, there are extensive photos of the work exhibited in the show, and there's an incredibly um, insightful essay um, to accompany the exhibition. Uh, which is a contribution from another internationally acclaimed arts figure, the American art critic, art historian and poet, uh, Donald Cuspet. So I would also like to acknowledge and thank him for that contribution. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank our team here at Lewin Gallery. Um, they've worked very hard uh, to deliver this wonderful show, hang it, install it and prep the gallery uh, for the work. Um, I'd like to thank in particular our assistant manager, Simon. You've met him as you um, come into the gallery. 
Thanks also to Liam Kelly, Martin Fagan, Emma King, Aoife Duncan, Orla Connaughton, Emma Finneran and Stephanie McAvoy. And we, um, I'm not sure if you are aware that we also operate at Flomo Castle. And between the two venues, we rely very heavily on volunteer support and assistance with invigilation and guiding. And I'm very delighted to um, acknowledge three of our volunteers. I know they're here somewhere. Um, I know that I've seen two Anne's and I've seen Helga, so I'd like to thank them. And if you give them a round of applause, because without them, we wouldn't be able to do <laughs> Lastly, I'd like to acknowledge again uh, Senator Gabrielle McFadden's presence and her husband. She's a great friend to the arts and indeed uh, heritage and, and tourism in general. And she's a fantastic advocate and ambassador for our film. And I'd like to thank her on a personal note for all the support that she's given me and the team here at the gallery. It's genuine support and um, I think it should be acknowledged. So thank you, Gab. Um, the one last thing that I would like to say is we think, um, we know that today uh, the gallery celebrates 100,000 visitors. Uh, we're not sure if Robert was the 100,000th visitor, but all the press statements are going to say that he was. So it's just a, a double whammy for us today. So without further ado, that's the formalities over, folks. Enjoy the rest of the art afternoon. Take the opportunity to speak to both artists, to Gab, and to really enjoy the work. Have a glass of wine and make an afternoon out of it. Thank you for coming. Thank you.